Hello, uh, today's date, it is uh, July 16th, I had to figure out what the seventh month was. Uh, no, it's May. Yeah, it's May. January, February, March, April, May. No, it's July. July 16th, uh, 2019. The name is Jim Howard. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Um... I'm not sure if it's still going. It looks like it might still be going on. Yes, I guess it is. Uh, but by the time you see this, it won't be going on. Um, my uh, daughter and son-in-law, back quite a few months ago, maybe a year, I'm not sure, they uh, did DNA testing. And they've been wanting to get DNA kits for uh, their mom and dad. And so uh, right now, this is normally $199. And uh, right now, it's on sale for $99. So my son-in-law ordered one for me and one for my ex-wife. We received them just a few minutes ago, and so this is the the kit. I'm really looking forward to doing it, so I'm going to record this and then save it, and in six or eight weeks when they get the results, I'm going to tell you the results of my DNA uh, testing. Um uh, I know that my uh, family came from Ireland, County Cork in Ireland. That's the Keegans. And I know that uh, my family also came from Germany. And I don't know, is it Alastair? I don't I can't, you know. From that province or that area, and during World War II, my um, grandmother, my father's mother, her husband, my grandfather, would be sitting, I guess, out on the oak. And you have to keep this in mind: my they had seven sons, three daughters. All of the sons, except for my father, my father worked in the, and my mother went to California with me as a baby, of course, and they worked building liberty ships as welders and boilermakers in the shipyard. But the other six, my father's six brothers, were all in the military service. Uh, Vince was in the Marine Corps and uh, let's see, I can't remember, but I know one or two was in the Navy because I've seen pictures of them. So anyway, we know that, oh, my uh, grandfather would be reading the paper and then he would say, uh, and he knew the name of the town that where my, where his wife, where her family came from in Germany and he would say, and anyway, I think it must have been a very small town, probably, because that doesn't mean it didn't get bombed. But he would say, oh, such and such, you know, got bombed. And she'd, oh, my God, what about the family, you know? So, you know, we know that our family, but that, it'll be interesting to see the DNA because I've seen a lot of people do the DNA uh, kit. And they're convinced and they've been told and whatever, and then their DNA comes out uh you know, differently. So I'm going to record this now and put it away someplace. And then when, then send this, I'm going to spit in a tube, I guess. I guess that's the way it works. I've watched a couple, a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of YouTube videos of people doing this, not spitting in the tube, but, uh, so anyway, here is the kit. 
and it says, uh, I guess you use this box from it because it has tape up here. So I guess you use that box to send it back. It says, uh, hi, let's get started. Uh, we are excited for you to begin this journey, and we want you to know we are here to help. Whether it's questions about your service or how to get started. Okay. And don't see, and don't forget, register your kit at 23andme.com slash start. That way we know it belongs to you when we when it arrives at our Alexa, turn on number one light. Oh, that doesn't help. Let's see. Number two light. From 80 to 100 percent. That doesn't help either that much. Just an old man needs new eyes. Let's see. Write down your 14 digit barcode. Before mailing, register your kit following the instructions. Well, I'm not, maybe, maybe I'm not smart enough to do this. Where's the barcode? Oh, this is the shipping tracking number. It's not going to be the bar. Oh, wait, maybe it is. Well, this is going to be when you mail it to them. Okay. Well, I have no point in, uh, is that the barcode? I'll find out. I'll have to uh, get some more light so I can read this, uh, little white printing iron green or whatever so okay now don't touch the mouse because if you're seeing this video um, the rest is going to come up and we'll find out if I really am if my DNA shows that we're from uh, Ireland and uh, Germany I'm sure it's going to show that we have some DNA in us from other places, right? Don't touch the mouse. I'll be right back. Did I want to show something else? Wait a minute. I think I did. No food or drink for 30 minutes. I don't know if I can go without eating for 30 minutes. Okay, uh, that's enough of fooling around here, so... So, uh, welcome back. Uh, you should have just seen a video, and I've forgotten now exactly what I said in it, uh, or didn't say, so I'll probably repeat a bunch of stuff. But you just saw a video of when I received two DNA kits. My, I'm probably repeating, but... Uh, my daughter and my son-in-law sent my ex-wife and myself 
uh, a one, two, three, no, a two, three me and me uh, DNA kit. Uh, my son-in-law uh, got them on Amazon for the sale, whatever that was that Amazon just had their big time sale or whatever. And so they're normally uh, $199 kits, and he got them for half price. So he got uh, each kit cost them $100. And they sent, he used Amazon. I got them like the next day or maybe two days later. And uh, Darlene and I uh, did our spitting in the little tube and sent them off. And today, uh, July 28th of 2019, we each got a email telling us that uh, the results were available. Um, I already looked at, uh, first an email came in for her, and uh, I looked through her with her permission, of course, you know, uh, because I have it set up where one login, and then we can just click and drop down and whatever. Um, I don't think there was any major surprises, uh, but anyway, I'm not going to do one of these because... I'm sure you've seen a bunch of videos on here where somebody sits down, maybe sometimes with their family. And, you know, they say, you know, Grandpa, you know, what do you think, you know? And Grandpa says, oh, we're, we are German, you know, or whatever. And, that, and then it turns out, you know, they're, I don't know, Japanese or African or something. And people go, oh, wow, you know, that's not going to happen. Uh, it wouldn't happen anyway. Uh I'm not the outgoing, you know, type of person. And, uh, I mean, you know, I don't buy really any lottery tickets or, um, I mean, I have in the past a few. I, uh, if I were to walk up to the corner store here and buy a scratch-off ticket and it was a million dollar winner or whatever, I'd go, wow, you know? But I wouldn't be jumping up and down, wouldn't be all, all excited, wouldn't be screaming and doing, you know, these TV shows that have uh, game shows that, of course they screen people ahead of time that have people on there, let's make a deal or the price is right or something like that. They'd never pick me because I wouldn't be jumping up and down and screaming and hollering. Even though I'd be happy, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't be showing that kind of emotion or whatever. If I won a big lottery, I mean, if I won a big lottery or whatever, I, you wouldn't see much difference. Except I have a stack of papers here. I'd be making a list of things to buy, list of money to give away, a list of which island do I want? Which, you know, I mean, it would be like that. But I wouldn't be any screaming and hollering. So there's not going to be any screaming and hollering here. Um, my ex, well, my ex-wife, uh, knows that her family came from, uh, Germany. Her father actually came over when he was real small with his mother, and they were both born in, uh, Darlene says, or she says her father was born in Austria. And uh, then her, anyway, she, she heard that her family was German and Irish. Uh, my family, we know that uh, our relatives came over from Ireland the Keegans came over from, we've, I've heard from County Cork in Ireland, and that the, uh, that we had family come over from uh, Germany, the Slotmans. My name is Howard, by the way. Our name is Howard. Uh, so we knew that. So her DNA... Uh, 
shows that she's European, 93.3% European, and shows that uh, she's underneath that category is, and I'll be showing mine. So I'm, I'm just going to run off some numbers. And I think, too, there'll be con some comparisons here because uh, I've uh, clicked for family members. There'll be some comparisons, but you may see that. Uh, she is, uh, what did I say, uh, European, 93.3%. Uh, Northwest Europe, 76.1%. Uh, French and German, 33%. And then there's some Netherlands in there. And then it gives the name of a town in uh, Germany. And uh, she's British and Irish, 26%. Um and to show you, she's Scandinavian, 0.5%, a half a percent. And Eastern Europe, 13.9%. And then there's things you can do here. I'm not sure I'll show them all to you, but that it, it'll, I probably will for me. You know, you can um, get an idea of the last 200 years where your DNA has been. And... Uh, for her, it names two German uh, cities, which I won't even try and pronounce. And, but it also mentions Bavaria and Berlin. So, she is uh, very European, 93.3%. Okay. I mean, no, no mystery here. I'm, I'm going to have her beat in that regard. Have a couple of medical things. Nothing medically turned up on her uh, that I can think of offhand. Anyway, let's go look at my ancestry here. My ancestry... Let's see. View your ancestry here. Blimey. Ninety nine point nine per cent European. Northwestern European, ninety six point four from British. And Irish, I am 70.1%. It's not showing, it's showing here uh, County Dublin, as, uh, and it's showing, you know, Greater London. Uh, it shows that I am 8% French and German. Scandinavian, 7.5%. Point zero 0.02 Finnish. And... Broadly, Northwestern European, 10.6%. Southern Europe, 2.5%. Spanish and Portuguese, 2.4%. And uh, broadly, Southern European, 0.2%. And broadly, European, 0.9%. Uh, of course, it shows a map here. Okay, this map I can't zoom in on, okay. Uh, so the surprising thing for me is that uh, there isn't more a German. Uh, I know my father's mother, during the start of World War II, uh, seven of her sons were in the United States military fighting against Germany, and well, one was, uh, Vince was in, my uncle was in the Marine Corps, he fought in the Pacific, came back really uh, traumatized from, uh, you know, what went on. I, I don't know if they, uh, if a Marine was assigned to use the flamethrower, and, you know, and trained, or if you just picked it up, uh, and then you were, you know, 
I don't know, but he came back. Uh, I mean, he went on to get married and have, I think, 11 or 12 kids and whatever, but uh, he came back. We now know, you know, now we would know that uh, he came, you know, and back then for World War II, uh, there wasn't, you know, a realization, I don't think. I think people must have known, but it was like, uh, you know, but now we know he really was traumatized, you know, by using the flamethrower and seeing the flamethrower used and everything else. So, but uh, anyway, she had my grandmother, you know, she had uh, seven sons who were all in the military fighting against the Axis. And uh, there she had family in a small town in Germany. And she worried about them when, uh, well, her husband, my grandfather, apparently, uh, I was born 1941, before, you know, March of 1941. And uh, the war for the United States began in December of 1941. And my grandfather must have died, uh, I'm thinking maybe 1942. Uh, because, uh, but anyway, he would sit on the porch, apparently, reading the newspaper. And there they had a flag up in their window. They, you know, a star for each one you had in the military service. And if there was a gold star, that meant that you had lost somebody. But he'd sit out there and be reading the newspaper. And then he would holler into his, you know, my... To, you know, to his wife, my grandmother, you know, oh, you know, the we, United States, we bombed such and such, and it was a small town. Can't remember the name of it. I'm not sure I was ever told, you know, in Germany. And I guess she'd go, oh, my God, my aunt and my uncle, and, well, you know, and they'd, I don't know when, I guess he finally told her, you know, no, just, uh, just funny, haha. Uh -huh. And uh, she had, she spoke German. And, of course, she spoke English. But then as in later life, you know, she forgot you know, any of the German that she knew. But I'm surprised that it doesn't show, for me, more of the uh, German. I'm definitely uh, limey. I'm definitely Irish and uh, English. So, um, okay, that's, uh, what else do we have here? Ancestry overview. Oh, and just and let's see reports. Neanderthal. That's really interesting. Um, so. I, my Neanderthal ancestry is made up of, uh, I have less than 4% of uh, Neanderthal DNA in me. So that's a, a pretty small amount. Of course, I'm all, you know, just fairly recently that this all, and I think that these, I'm not sure if it's two and three and me, is it, but it, just a short time ago, we didn't think that, I guess, Homo sapiens, we did not think that there was interbreeding between the Neanderthals. We knew there was an overlap, you know, in Europe or Northern Europe or someplace, you know. We knew there was an overlap that our Homo sapien, uh, if that's what we were, and that we were in the same area, but we didn't think there was any interbreeding. And now, because of this DNA, we now know, yeah, there definitely was interbreeding, some going on. And uh, so I have less than 4% uh, DNA from Neanderthals. And uh, my son-in-law, who has 
a master's degree in, okay, I got to get this right in case he happens to watch this. He's not a YouTube follower of mine, but got to get this right. Okay. It's not psychology. It's not, let's see. It is, starts with a P, and he has a master's degree in, it's philosophy, that's it. So, he's a pretty smart guy, very smart. And, uh, you know, he taught uh, college in the past. Very smart guy. He has sort of a high level of, I forget what the number is, it may show up here. No, I don't think it will. I'm linked in to see my daughter's uh, numbers and stuff, but not him. Uh, but anyway, he has a high, so it's kind of funny, guy with a college teacher with a uh, high level of, but of DNA from Neanderthals. Uh, but turns out it's actually good to have some, there are, well, it's, it's like with everything else, things, you know, good and bad. It's good to have some of that uh, DNA, and it gives you, we, they don't know, if, and this is kind of on the cutting edge, they're not really sure of all a lot of this stuff, but uh, some of the DNA flags or whatever these things are, what do they call them, variants or whatever, uh, it may be good to have, the, uh, may make you stronger may make you more resistant to certain diseases and things like that. So it's not a bad thing. It's just kind of funny. Of uh, Here, I barely got out of high school. I went, to, I went to summer school five years in a row. From I didn't know they sent anybody from grade school to, to summer school. And I went because of poor spelling. Went to Catholic school, by the way, so they probably just sent me over to the Redemptorist just to get some money or something. But anyway, I was sent over there, for, and my spelling was bad, but my spelling was bad because I had hearing loss in both ears. That was uh, my previous grade school, I had, I had, which was Catholic. I went to all Catholic schools until I went to community college or whatever. Uh, the school, the other school, Holy Name, had two years they had done testing of students, and they sent, you know, a thing home to my parents showing that I had really bad hearing loss in both ears. My parents didn't, uh, didn't do anything about it. I can't blame them when I, uh, went to work and I had, I had health insurance and whatever. I never, uh, never did anything about my hear, you know, never had it checked. Still haven't had it checked. I'm 78 years old, kind of late now. But, uh, oh, so I was sent to summer school for spelling. But when I got there, the nun who was in charge of, you know, the classes, okay, all of you who, you know, are here because of, some were there, I guess, because of poor reading. Those of you who are here for spelling, you know, the reason people can't spell is because they can't read well. And I was sitting there thinking, uh, no, that's not because I can read. I was thinking, I didn't say it. I was thinking, I can read really well. And I was thinking, I I bet I can, I bet I can read better than the nun. Uh, I, back in those days, we didn't have the World Wide Web or the Internet or anything like that or whatever. I ordered books from the government printing office and I got manuals on everything, mainly uh, military manuals, you know, surviving in the desert, surviving in the in the uh, tropical uh, and just, uh, but all those kinds of books and things that uh, I ordered in. But I didn't do much studying at school, but I couldn't spell, but the reason I couldn't spell was, but anyway, then I go to high school, military high school, all male high school, De La Salle Military Academy, because I want to go in the military. Of course, I, <laughs> I, 
what I didn't know that I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement to get in, and then totally, I totally forgot about the hearing that would have kept me out. But my idea was that I was going to go in the military and make a career of it. Uh, but anyway, I went to, uh, you know, high school, and uh, we were called a 55C. There was a military a government thing that there were ROTC, you know, junior ROTC programs for uh, people going to high school where three days a week or something like that, they took an hour or something and they were in the ROTC and they wore the YSI uniforms, you know, for that. We were in uniform all the time in the morning before school. You know, the battalion fell in in front of the school and the flag went up and the band played and you know, we all, uh, we had military every day. On Friday, we had half the day with military, and they, we, we were in full dress uniforms. We did a, a you know, a p parade. And uh, so, so I went to that. That was what, that was my high school, taught by the Christian brothers. And I don't think I ever opened up any of the books. I carried them home every day. And, you know, our school didn't have school buses, you know, I took the public, you know, the public bus to school and home. Um, I never studied, but I was reading all these manuals. I was in the Ground Observer Corps, uh, Civil Defense, and all types of stuff. I took a light rescue in high school or right after light rescue. I was trained to be a radiological monitor who would go out and when a nuclear, you know, after the nuclear bombs went off, I'd be out with a Geiger counter and go back and tell the other people, you know, I'd be, I'd be glowing, you know, go back and tell, yeah, it's safe to go on out, you know, stuff like that. I, so, but anyway, I went to summer school four years in a row. I never, I didn't really try, but I didn't, uh, so... How did I get on that subject? I do not know. Um, something to do with Neanderthals. Okay, I'm in third place out of my family and friends. Okay, I do not know who is the top. Highest in... Well, anyway, here's my daughter. And uh, here's my ex-wife, and here I am. So I am the last caveman, or the least caveman, I guess. Okay, ancestry. Ancestry reports, is this it? Or did I just do that? No, okay. I have uh, 1,224 relatives of some degree. I think there's only one that's uh, like a first cousin. That's, of course, of people that have taken this, you know, the, uh, you know, with them. This shows a map, tells where they are. I was born in, you know, Kansas City, Missouri. But you can see here's the uh, number of DNA relatives that I have. Uh, Let's see, compared to your average 23andMe customer, your DNA relatives are more likely, 95% more likely to have red body or facial hair. Um, my mother had red hair when she was, real red hair when she was young. Uh, 
98 more likely, 98 percent more likely to drink caffeinated soda than other DNA people here on. Uh, and that's all I drink is. Uh, actually, I'm drink. I drink now Coke Zero. Well, it still has it has caffeine in it. Uh, I've never had an espresso drink. Uh, you know, growing up, we I owned. You know, when I was a kid, we had a dog. 35% less likely to have learned a foreign language as an adult. Now, of course, we're talking about DNA relatives here. And, uh, okay, overview, composition, is that what, uh, ancestry composition? No, okay. Okay, I think we saw this, I think. Boy, I am really... Can I do an English accent? I should be able to. Okay, this shows... Uh, how many generations ago was your most recent ancestors for each population? So... 1670s, we would have been, my DNA would have been Finnish and, and uh, moving up to 1760, Scandinavian. Then in 1820, 1850, French and German. Then I guess we were smart and we got, hey, it might be a good idea to be on that island over there, I guess, you know. Island might be better. There's too much of this. That's, I don't know. Uh, Okay, this first time I've seen this, you can change the confidence uh, level. My uh, son-in-law told me about that a little bit. I'm not sure I fully, because he showed me some different. If you have one amount of confidence level set, that you can adjust it or whatever. But anyway, I'll stick with these settings right, right now. I'm European, 99.9%. I don't understand why the more German doesn't show up. I guess, you know, I kind of forget about my, because uh, my mother was kind of like a, <sighs> her folks, I've got pictures. I should pull up a picture. Here's a picture of my mother's family. Uh, and it's, in the country with a old shack there and there's about 15 or so people standing outside of the shack in coveralls and looking very poor very hillbilly or country or whatever some of the guys are there with their shotguns or whatever standing out there and and uh, with their shotguns around, so, uh, but it must be, I'm guessing, I mean, even though I don't know what their DNA would be, it must be that those people, you track them, you know, go back with them, and they must have had, you know, European, maybe from, maybe from England or Ireland or something, in their, in, in order for me to come up with a, you know, European 99.9, .9, so. This, by the way, on the health thing is going to show that I have a marker for, it shows health information. And when you get the kit, before you send for the kit, they ask you, are you sure you want this information? And then when you get the results, you know, it's still, okay, do you want to see this information about your health, and you have to click that you do. In fact, they have you look at a little tiny thing to tell you because I'm sure they're afraid that somebody's going to, you know, get the results and it's going to say, uh, well, you have a marker for cancer, or you have a marker for Parkinson's disease or something, and 
somebody's going to go do something you know they shouldn't do or somebody's going to freak out or whatever so they try to educate you a little bit so I do have uh, I think we'll run into that I have a marker for Alzheimer's late Alzheimer's to come late I guess that'd be a good thing you know uh, and uh, my mother, you know, she died of Alzheimer's. And so definitely that's something to, for me to be aware of. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't mean if you have, you know, then they have these uh, health things. I think we'll stumble across these things. But uh, don't have anything. I don't have any markers. And Darlene didn't either. Darlene doesn't have any markers that uh, mean that you are a carrier of something, which doesn't mean that you're going to, it doesn't mean that you have it. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you're necessarily going to pass it on and things like that. So she has no markers for anything like that. She has no markers. I don't have any markers either except, I guess, the thing that, uh, well, it's not a carrier thing, but, uh, yeah, you know, my daughter, and I have four kids, by the way, my kids should be aware that, hey, you know, that their father, father's mother had Alzheimer's, and that I have the marker, or no, I don't have a marker, the variant or whatever it is, so. Okay, let's see what I'm missing here. I got a feeling this probably isn't as interesting as I thought it was going to be. I guess it would be more interesting if I had the entire family here and they were reacting to various, uh, you know, various things. The only problem is uh, my grown son does live with us here. And then I have a son in Florida. And then, okay, and then I have a daughter that lives in the apartment complex with us. But then I have my other daughter, uh, you know, is in Washington, D.C. Did I forget one of my kids? I don't know. Anyway. Um, okay, I think, let me click again on this ancestry thing. See if I... Go down here. Interesting again, you know, it's ninety nine point nine percent European. Now of that ninety seven that's me, ninety six point four. You know, and seventy point one is British Isles and you know, French and German only eight and these numbers here are you know, really insignificant uh, down here. I've got 0.1% of Western Africa. So. I need to get a flag, a British flag, a need a picture of the Queen up here someplace. That's what I could do when there's elections here in the United States, and I, I should just have two pictures, you know. Don't put the president's picture up. Put the queen's picture up. If we get a good president, put the president's picture up. Take oh, As European as I am, I couldn't take the queen's picture down. Blimey, me, that would be bad. Okay, I think DNA relatives. I guess I should show that. I think it's going to show the... Uh, relatives yeah here we go like uh, you know here's a first cousin and uh, first to a second cousin I think that would be a first cousin uh, but then and here's the list of you know now of course these are people who had to do the DNA testing so they didn't have to nobody put a gun to their head but, uh, 
notifications. Let's see what this. Let's go down to profile features and activity. Let's see what. No, let's see. Ancestor birthplaces. United States, uh, Germany, Canada, Ireland, United Kingdom. Let's see. This is. Okay, let's uh, go back and what else do we have? Timeline. Okay. Okay, we're going to get into the medical thing here a little bit, which I won't spend too much time on. Uh, let's see. DNA relatives. Let's go to health. Health overview. Okay. Health highlights. I have a variant detected for whatever this is. Do they tell me what it is? I don't care. Okay. I have this which slightly increased. Well, I'm at a slightly increased risk for this which, well, let's click on this first one up here. I have no idea what this is. A genetic condition that can lead to lung and liver disease that is caused by decreased levels of alpha-1, something rather, eight, eight, AAT protein. While you have one of the two genetic variants that we tested, you're not likely at risk for symptoms of AAT deficiency. It's caused by certain combinations of generic genetic variances. However, people with only one variant detected are not likely at risk following of developing lung or liver disease related to, you know. Uh, Okay, so we're going to forget about that. Now this one here, slightly increased risk. It's an autoimmune condition in which the consumption of gluten, and I've seen, I've heard a lot of people talking about gluten recently, you know, not eating it or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's found in wheat, barley, and rye. It can result in damage to the small intestines. It can lead to both digestive and non-digestive problems. And uh, I have one of two genetic variances. Uh, so I may, though, look into this a little bit more and I may look at dieting or, or whatever and see uh, maybe I should uh, cut back on glutens whatever they are I think they're little furry creatures that make a real happy sound when you hold them and pet them I think that's what they are okay now here late Alzheimer's Slightly increased risk, um, you know, since my mother had it. Uh, it's something that need to be watching out for, and my children, you know, should be aware that my mother had it, their grandmother had it, and that uh, I have a variant or a marker for it. Doesn't mean that I'm going to get it. Uh, doesn't mean they're going to get it, but they should be a little bit of aware, you know, so. Um, ancestry, composite DNA. Okay, we went to health at Overlook. Let's see. Pre health prepositions, wellness, carrier status. 
I don't, my ex-wife doesn't have any of these at all, and I don't have any, so that's good. I watched a YouTube video by a young, attractive uh, woman, and she had, she was, that's something I guess different. She was a egg donor, and I uh, wish I could remember the URL, I'd put it below, but she was an egg donor for people, and then she did the uh, DNA testing, and she came back with uh, that she was a carrier of three serious things. Now, she did not have any of these problems, but she was a carrier. So, and especially with her, like, well, I think she stopped donating eggs. But uh, one of the, anyway, she, she was a marker. That does, and she didn't have them, but you can be, I guess, have the uh, marker. And, or you can be a carrier. You can be a carrier of a disease and not pass it on. So, you know, that your children will not have, you know, the, uh, will not be a carrier of it, but one of the, you know, one could be. Or if you, uh, with DNA, if, you know, you have a child and the father has this marker, that would be two markers. Uh, there, I forget, 25% chance that a child born would have, would be, there again, I think it would be, I don't think it would be the, would be a carrier. And then, of course, it could be to actually have it. I forget the percentages. Actually, they showed, I believe, the percentages here. So, anyway, I'm not a carrier of any, you know. Let's go back here. That's good. By the way, one of the medical things that she that popped up for her on the uh, on the thing was, and I think we may get to uh, get to it did pop up for me, but it's interesting. She was going to have she didn't need breast jobs. She was going to have she was thinking of breast enlargement and uh, maybe some other surgery, you know, to, I think to look, well, definitely to look better. She didn't need to look better, but I think maybe she's trying to be a YouTube star or something. I don't know. I just, that's the only video I saw of her. Uh, but she came back with a indicator that one of the things that she might have would be that if she were to receive an anesthetic, there could be problems with breathing. And anyway, she, she told her mother when she got, you know, the DNA results and everything, you know, look, and then she, you know, mentioned that. And her mother said, oh, my God. And, you know, the, I guess the girl, what? When you were three, you had to have an operation and you stopped breathing. You know, they, they got your breathing again. And uh, so anyway, this lady, you know, uh, says in this YouTube video, I'm not having any electric, you know, elective surgeries, you know, at all now. I'm not going to have my, I'm only going to have surgeries that I have to have, which is, you know, smart. Of course, uh, she said, and, you know, and I'll tell my doctor. Well, yes, tell your doctor, but you also need the uh, anesthesiologist is going to see you and talk to you. And in cases like that and whatever, you need to, you know, some of the hospitals I worked at, it would depend, you know, it depends. Sometimes the person is waiting to go into surgery and the anesthesiologist then starts asking all kinds of questions. Um, one of the hospitals I know, I'm not sure how they, if it was all, you know, the anesthesiologist would go up to the room of the patient the day before surgery or whatever and you know talk to the so anyway pay attention to the if you have any medic you know pay attention to the 
anesthesiologist. I pay attention to all the doctors and nurses and everybody, but uh, pay attention to the anesthesiologist. We had a worked hospital security for 30 years. Had a guy who was going to surgery the next day, and the patient was up on the sixth floor. Our security offices were on the sixth floor. You know, the lieutenant's office with the secretary, security officer's office, the director of security's office, right there on the sixth floor. Anyway, the anesthesiologist came up, went over, and talked to the patient who was going to go to surgery the next day. Then he came back to the elevator, and the grown son of the uh, patient, I don't know if he was in the room, and followed the doctor to the elevator, or if he just went in the room, and the, you know, the patient said, oh, my anesthesiologist, or whatever, but anyway, the son comes over, grown son, you know, 30, 40 years of age, or whatever, maybe 50, I don't know, he comes over and grabs the anesthesiologist, and so then, you know, I come out of the office, and another security officer shows up, we're having to fight this guy that's attacked the anesthesia, you know, because he, no, no, you know, I don't want, you know, surgery done, my, whatever. And that was, uh, that was something because he, the elevator had, door was on the sixth floor. That was the top floor of the hospital. And so we're wrestling with this guy. And of course, our legs or his legs or body or whatever are keeping the elevator there. He's screaming at the top of his lungs, and uh, we're trying to get him handcuffed, and the police got called, and so they arrived, and what happened is they arrived on, officers came up to the third floor entrance and came in, and they called on the radio, you know, we're 1023, we've arrived over the radio, and then they're at the elevators trying to get the elevator or find out where, what's going on, I guess, on the third floor level. And then uh, the uh, police arrive at the first floor entrance and they come in that way and they're at the elevator and you can hear this screaming and pounding all the way down, all through the hospital. You know, the air, the uh, uh, elevator shaft was like a megaphone thing. And so they call it, the police on the first floor call in. They think they're, you know, that their buddies are having problems. So they call in, you know, officers need us because they think they're, you know, they're, they think their officers are there. They're not there. It's just us. Some of them. And so they call on the radio. Officers need assistance. And that goes out. Beep, beep, beep. Officers need assistance. You know, officers need assistance. Trinity Lutheran Hospital, 31st and Wyandotte. And every police car when a, three beepers go out, when an officer goes out, every car, even cars that are so far out, they shouldn't even, you know, they should pay attention to it, but they shouldn't be going red lights and sirens screaming over there when everybody else in Kansas City is going there. And so we finally got the guy handcuffed and got down, got him down to the lobby and whatever, and the police were kind of pissed at us at security because of this confusion, you know. Anyway, why am I telling you this story? Because early onset of, let's hope not. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry about this. I really thought it'd be more interesting. I, I think I, because I watched a bunch of the videos, and I think it was more interesting when you have, you know, when, like I've seen them on TV. I saw on TV where they had like five or six celebrities and they had the DNA report. Like Oprah was one of them. And I forget who the others were, you know, stars, whatever. Then I've seen it, and you probably have too. It's on YouTube someplace. There's a, a thing where they have a show and they have, it wasn't a YouTube video, but it was taken from TV. And I believe, I didn't actually watch the entire thing. I think you have, a couple black people, or maybe just one black person, and then you have a guy who's from uh, the good old South, 
a good old redneck who's a member of the clan and uh, whatever. So he and they've done DNA. Then they're going to read it. You know, you know what's coming, right? So, okay, well, you have the black guy here. Credit to his race, by the way. Uh, uh, let's see, you know, you have 80% African, you know, from Belgian Congo and French Equatorial Africa and Katanga. And you have, uh, you know, 10% uh, UK, 10% Irish or something. And that's other guys. Other guys are, oh, he's not, he doesn't have any Irish in him or, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know what's coming, right? Okay, uh, Mr. Racist, uh, now we have your DNA results. Let's see. Yes, you are, you are 40% uh, UK. And uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, you're 60% Angolan. And, you know, the guy was no way. And he he denied it. No, that's wrong. That's fake. He didn't. That was before Trump, so he didn't say fake news or whatever. But that's fake. But then they, I saw, I don't know if it was the same show or another show where the guy came, the black guy, came, or the uh, clan member, whatever, came back and said, yeah, uh, that is, my DNA is correct. And that's, you know. So anyway. Okay, what else? Okay, wellness carrier status. Okay, I don't have anything that I'm carrying, so did I already show that? I think I did. Yeah, okay, I did. I... Okay, so the next thing we want to go to is traits, which I, you know, this is interesting, but it's not, you know, ability to match a, a musical pitch. And since some of these things, you know, like since I have had hearing loss since I was in grade school, since I was in the first or second grade, I can't match any. This, you know, I don't even know what asparagus smells like there, but likely can smell and black hair, bald spot, bitter taste, bunions, uh, dandruff, earlobe type, early hair loss, ear wax type, eye color, likely blue or green, I have green eyes, fear of heights, uh, Less likely, less likely than the average to be afraid of heights. Fear of public speaking. Less likely to have a fear of public speaking. Finger ring longer. Likely finger ring is longer. Which one is a finger ring, by the way? I think, I think this is where I wear the wedding ring, wasn't it? So, I don't know. If that's, that's not the finger ring, I think. So I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I, you know, this is mosquito bite frequency, likely bitten less than other types. <laughs> In Florida, I worked a contract security job at a, um, shipping place where trucks came in and things were shipped out and things were shipped in or whatever. And I came in, when I came in, there was a few people there and then everybody left and it was just me like although occasionally a truck driver but the mosquitoes where it was in Florida I mean it was unreal it was unreal and I worked that uh, job for months out there and once a supervisor came out you know and in the patrol car only once and he came out and uh he got out of the car and the mosquitoes were just, and he, he was like, you know, God damn, how can you stand this? How can you stand this? And he ran to the car and took off, patrol car and took off. And he never came back. It was just a job and I, uh, you know, 
Glad I didn't come down with something, though, from the mosquitoes. They were, that was bad. Uh, when I was in Florida, we went, well, a few times a week, we went, you know, to parks, the ocean, and that kind of stuff. And uh, we went down to Biscayne, I believe it is. Nice park, and drove into there. And then we were driving along. We saw there's places where you can pull over, and then you can go ahead and you can look or whatever. Uh, so we pulled in there and got out, and the mosquitoes, you know, it was like a cloud coming in, and I don't think I got halfway to the place to look at the stuff, and I said, let's get back in the car and leave or whatever, and my son or whatever, no, let's go, and I said, let's get in the car and go, and I think I headed back towards the car. And he headed over towards the railing or viewpoint or whatever, and then pretty quick, uh, he came back to the car. You know, it was like a cloud coming at you. Okay, so don't think this was all that interesting, was it? Okay, what health? Let's see. Lab results, research. I think that's probably, okay, wait a minute, let's see, family and friends overview, let's check that, see what pops up here, did I click on it, I think I did, maybe not, let's see, I share DNA with the uh, 1,224 other people. Uh, seven of them are close relatives. And uh, I think I already showed that, didn't I? Let's see here. Well, it's, this is responding pretty slow, so this may be a good time for me to, let's see, might be a good time for me to bring this to a conclusion. Um, I'll put a code below, by the way, if you order a DNA kit from these people, uh, Now, I'll get $20, and I'm not sure if you get 20 off or whatever. I can't remember. Anyway, I'll put a link below. I'll put a link below to it in Amazon uh, for the kit. And remember, my son-in-law, Aaron, uh, got the kit, got the kits for half price when Amazon had a sale, so you might watch for that. You know, mark it, put it on your favorites or something like that. And then I don't know if uh, 23andMe has any uh, discounts or whatever. I'll put the link to that because it said something about, here it is. Receive up to $20 for each friend and family member that you refer. Let's see. Uh, refer friends get up to $20 per referral. Invite your friends and family by sharing your referral with them. Your friends and family will receive a minimum of 10% off of their 23andMe order. You will receive an Amazon gift card up to $20 for each by email for each qualifying order. Um, let's see, Facebook, what's this, phone call, your name, I'll check and see if there's a uh, actual referral code, I'm not going to send an email to everybody, <laughs> I can send an email to anybody, but uh, <clears throat> maybe there's a code, and if so, I'll put it, put it under there, so apparently you'll get a minimum of $10, or 10% off. If you use the link, 
If you use the Amazon link, I will make a small commission if you do order that way. So um, let's end this with uh, with this overview. Nope, I think I clicked on the wrong thing. Let's stay home. Overview. No, I think this is. Okay, this is it. So this is how I'm going to end this. I should, should end it with uh, God Save the Queen or something being played. There you have it. Okay, I thank you very much for watching. I may not get those links in right away, but I'll get this uploaded as quick as I can to YouTube. Uh, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've done it, uh, or if you're going to, or whatever. Thank you very much for watching.